So yes, my personal position, which I don't want to use as a forum, is probably perfectly acceptable. Let's see, every religion represented in this room has it, some sort of injunction against killing. But um, we don't seem to be real good at that right now. So the position I want to take is not to convince you of my position, but I want to take a twist on it. We're in psychology, okay? And we're in America. I'm a therapist, and I think as a therapist, one of the great blessings for me is year after year of practicing listening to somebody else's reality without it triggering my reality. I just mentioned in the last class, I had an Irishman who absolutely hated Jews. Hated Jews! He was my client for four years till he finished up and, and, and really walked away in great shape. Well, you look at my nose, you look at my hair. If I'm a therapist, what do I do? Pull him off the couch and say, listen, you lousy mick, you goddamn Jew-hating son of a bitch, how about a little therapy? Whack, 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 whack. You follow what I mean? It, it was extraordinary for me to sit in rooms with people who are so different from myself. Now, once we've arrived at, wow, I really hear your reality, or you really hear my reality, then we have a completely different kind of dialogue, which is, say, for example, um, I'm questioning you. Okay, so after we bomb them, what do you think the consequences of the bombing will be? Will that eliminate the fear? And I don't mean tricky, because you know when we're debating, we try to catch each other. But let's say it's a real loving openness to opposite realities. Well, do you think that if we bomb them off, we flatten Afghanistan, do you think that's it? And, of course, as a rational person, your answer would be no. And I would keep asking you, in your philosophical position, to look at possible consequences. Not, ha see, you've just created five more Osamas. Or, lovingly, you could ask me, which would go down the path of, well, what are you saying, nothing? That we should just let this go on? But the nature of the dialogue, allows for the differences without dismissing each other as non-believable fools or warmongering killers or peace-loving, impotent people. To be the greatest of all citizens in this country, all we got to do is behave exactly the way the Constitution asked us to. It's an extraordinary document. It's an extraordinary document for us to really love and accept these differences. And we don't, we haven't, for 200 years, this is an extraordinary opportunity for us to practice within our borders understanding and ways of dialoguing with massive differences. Because if we practice that, then we're able to even go outside our borders and see it. And then, in fact, we're behaving in ways that will bring Fara and Orit to the same place, which is... We have tried that. I don't um, We are just infants in the world of learning how to do this. We haven't tried and it failed. We're infants, just infants. Hey, I could solve it real simple. You know what we do? We take 50,000 Taliban troops and we station them in the United States. And we take 50,000 American troops and we station them in Afghanistan. Willingly. And then while they're there, and while they're here, we can't bomb them. We'd be killing our own boys. They can't blow us up, and they stay there because they're suicidal fanatics. Right. I'm sorry. I was under the impression every soldier is trained to be suicidal everywhere in the world. I thought every soldier is trained to kill Oh, well, that's one thing about America. We've never killed innocent people. We, we never kill innocent people. That's one thing about us. We're so damn good at what we do that we never kill innocent people. Um, the point being how easy it is to slip into the stereotype. How easy it is to slip into the stereotype. If I'm Afghani and we go in with bombs and my name is whatever a good Afghani name is and I see some things coming out of the sky... I'll think it's American terrorists. That will be my reality. 
So, I, and, and I love that you're giving voice to a long, honed, shaped Israeli perspective. It's good that you're doing this. I really mean that. Because all of us have what's been done, our education and our belief systems. You know, and that's why I'm not even disagreeing with you. So, as soon as we reduce them to suicide bombers, I heard the news say that the plane crashed into the building in a kamikaze-like attack. Kamikaze has an ancient tradition, a beautiful story about a divine wind that heals. And, and so for whatever reasons the Japanese chose those names, kamikaze to us in America became, isn't that a bad word, kamikaze? You know, we had racist jokes. What's the name of the last living kamikaze pilot? Chicken teriyaki. In other words, we had the image of bad guy. So as soon as we thought that, I thought, wow, how, how must the Japanese feel about it? This, you know, they're our enemies now again because they invented kamikaze style. But then I just ran through a quick talk on Thursday with 460 about how hundreds of thousands of men three times put on metal suits and marched through Europe, killing every Muslim and every Jew they could on the way to Jerusalem to rescue it from the Muslims and Jews. They call themselves Christian soldiers. These are fanatics. So I thought we should say the planes crashed into the building Christian soldier style. And then I thought, but then there are Protestants who live in Ireland who kill Catholics anytime they can. So I thought we should call it Protestant style. And then I thought, well, there are Catholics who killed all the Muslims and the Jews in Spain and kill all the Protestants in Ireland. I thought we should call it Catholic style. But then I thought, there's a real fanatic religion that says, if I forget the O Jerusalem, may my right arm become paralyzed and may my tongue cling to the roof of my mouth. Well, that's fanatic. That's Judaism. And so we each have in our belief systems people who will die and kill innocent people, the, the very words that came out of you. And we're so conditioned. The only example I could use to try to shift people's reality that's not loaded was I grew up in the United States. I grew up in the greatest country on the earth. I mean, I knew that. And I felt sorry for everybody else in the world who didn't live in the greatest country on the earth. Not only that, but I knew that everybody else in the world were going, gee, I wish I lived in the greatest country in the world. My country sucks. And of course they don't. But how my perception shifted is as a child at the Olympics. The Olympic flag would be raised, the circles of the five continents. And then all the countries in the world march around the stadium holding their national flag. And each country, when it passes the Olympic flag, dips their flag in honor of the Olympic flag, except the United States. Yeah. And I remember as a kid, I remember thinking, we're so goddamn cool that all those other wimps around the world bow and... We're so cool, we don't. I did not yet have the capacity to be anything but an American watching the Olympics going. How would you feel if you lived in another country in the United States didn't bow its flag? Would you go, God, Americans are so goddamn cool, they don't bow like us wimps. <laughs> I don't think so. I think it would elicit, who the hell do you think you are? And so many of our acts, so many of our acts, that make internal sense based on our belief system. When seen from out there, are so different. I was faculty advisor to the foreign student organization, even as a grad student, during the Six Day War. And most of the foreign students were South American and Lebanese. So I heard the Six Day War coming from my root propaganda and from Radio Beirut in English. Wow, that was a reality shift. That was a reality shift. So, forget about all world politics. If we have the capacity not to lose our identity, but hold our truth, 
and still be able to hear others will be fabulous therapists, will have one of the most peaceful marriages in our lives, because that's when couples fight, when one doesn't hear the other one's reality, will raise healthy children, and we can move toward a world of peace without homogenizing it, without killing each other, but here's where we start, and it's very matriotic to try. Matriotic in the feminine sense of self-nurturing and nurturing to others. Denise is a documentary filmmaker, uh -huh. and um, she seems to think I have something to say. Uh -huh.